Hello Aquarius! Welcome to my channel, The Mother Speaks Tarot. My name is Allison. My channel is still pretty new, just over a year old, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you've already subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you all so much. Thank you for being here with me. I know that without you, without my viewers, I wouldn't have a channel. Those of you who are new and don't know, I'm also an author. I'm writing a series. It's an action adventure love story on superhero twin flames called Perception, the two yet one. This is book one where I've read aloud live on Facebook and uploaded all those videos to YouTube for you to watch for free. Just know that um, book two is published and available. All the links that you need for my books are in the description box below. Also, if you would like a personal reading, I do offer those. Um, the information to contact me to schedule one is also in the description box. So welcome and welcome back everyone. Uh, thanks for being here with me today. Um, this uh, Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday is um, August 8th, often referred to as the Lionsgate portal. It is um, a very important gate for me personally. And uh, because the energy has just been really strong, um, we're going to uh, just kind of, it, it's not actually channeling like a, a goddess or anything, but it is the energies that we're going through um, right now this week. So I've got this beautiful card here. It's called Easter or Ishtar's Lion's Gate. Well, wow, isn't that just so beautiful? And it looks so good with this. I love it. <laughs> All right, so um, today I'm going to be using the Lightseer's Tarot by Chris Ann, um, a tarot deck that I bought for summertime because of this beautiful sun card. That's how I feel during the summertime. And uh, as you may have guessed, I'm going to pull one card from the White Light Oracle. I'll be pulling one card at the end of the reading. Uh, this is by Alana Fairchild and artwork by Andrew Gonzalez. It is just so beautiful. Okay, and um, if I need to clarify, I'll do that with the uh, Tarot of the Cloisters deck um, by Michelle Leavitt. Okay, yeah, so I got these two actually to, to go together, even though, you know, they don't, they're both very modern and they're both focused on white, light, on light, okay? So, um, this deck does not have, like, um, reversed meanings. It's all about light. If you want to see the light in something or the dark. So, you know what I'm doing here? I'm just reading intuitively. So, um, as a reader, I read minor arcana cards as messages about your free will. I read major arcana cards as messages about your divine blueprint. Your divine blueprint is the plan that you wrote for your own life before you incarnated so that you would encounter and hopefully learn certain important lessons of life that when learned raise the vibration and uh, wisdom encoded in your soul. Because of our free will, it is possible to lower in vibration during a lifetime, but if you can manage to rise lifetime after lifetime, you may become uh, in, a, in a new life, you may become what we call enlightened like Buddha and Jesus, Isis, Thoth, and many, many others. We know that these people have uh, affected a great deal of positive change on our planet. So when I'm looking at your major arcana cards, it's similar to looking at what we would call fate, but it isn't because we have free will. Um, now, there are times that things happen in life where no matter what we do, we cannot affect how they turn out. Those are written into our divine blueprint that way those times are indicated to me by the wheel of fortune card which you don't have okay so let's just get started here at the heart of everything you've got the ace of wands in the reverse while this would be like a new idea or a new beginning or a new job even because wands um, can be a career but it's also the spiritual path and here I'm just feeling like this is your spiritual path, I don't know, there's, there's some, uh, this is delays, okay, this is having to wait, maybe um, needing to reconsider what you have been planning, okay, so um, maybe your intuition has been a little bit off, since this, to me, looks like the third eye on fire, but you're, you're in the reverse here, so um, this 
new inspiration. You, you're not inspired. You, you don't, um, maybe your plans aren't working as well as, okay, so this is the, um, this is the energy that is crossing this, which is what is at the heart of everything. And this is the Seven of Pentacles. So what you, this is here is basically, if you look at this, this is the energetic garden of your life. Okay, and this talks about taking care of your energy, um, taking care of your garden, making sure that it's watered, weeded, um, all the pests are out of it. You know, you have to continue to maintain this uh, energetic garden so that it will yield good fruits, you know, not dry, untasty ones, not, not tasty ones, <laughs> you know what I mean? So what you're doing is basically you're looking at what you have invested in so far. You're looking at the things that you have created and, you know, they're not quite ready. You want something else to happen here. So what is at the root of everything is the page of swords, okay? So this is your energy. Now, this is you, okay? Now, this can be you watching, okay? Um... This, a lot of the times, this is what I call a supervisor energy where they are, uh, they have the authority to watch and report back to some type of boss, right? This page of swords, though, she looks very curious and she looks, um, uh, she's very intelligent. And these all look like a bunch of ideas, right? So, you know, there is an, an aspect where, um, you may be trying to think outside the box. You're, you're trying to learn new stuff. You're trying to get new ideas, okay? Because it's like with this, uh, with this energy here, this, these are your ideas. This is your inspiration, a new beginning. So I feel like you're, th things are being delayed. So if your garden, um, if you were supposed to have fruit by now and it isn't, coming out yet, then new plans need to be made because the old plan isn't really working. Okay. So the, the page of swords does have this aspect where they bring, um, the thought, your thoughts, your ideas into the reality. Okay. Um, yeah, you're looking for a new way basically. Okay. Now, this is your uh, past energy, your recent past that is moving out of your life at this time. And what we've got here is the two of pentacles in the reverse. So um, earth energy, Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus energy here. Um, again, with your earthly life, you may have been going back and forth about what to do. You're not doing that anymore. Um, I think that maybe what you were doing was thinking that you had these two choices. But now you're just like, oh, um, I got to figure something else like maybe you were uh, watering, okay? And um, you're thinking to yourself, well, it's either uh, they're not coming out, they're not sprouting, so, or, you know, there's no fruit yet, so maybe it needs more water, and that's not it. And maybe it needs more fertilizer, and that's not it. Well, it could only be water or fertilizer. Uh, no, maybe it isn't, uh, it probably isn't, because you tried that and it wasn't working, right? You, this also has, um, it also talks about lessening your work or your responsibilities, okay? This can be um, also uh, where you're looking like you're happy, but you're not. So while you're going through all this back and forth, people may think that you're happy, but you're, you're just like, I got to change something here, you know? Now... These two cards for me are um, future cards. And what we have here is the Knight of Swords, okay? Now, he's, he's in the reverse. Now, you may, um, when he's in the reverse, this is, you know, sharp words and aggression, okay? This is, um, this can be incapacity, though, as well, or not, or, or even um, imprudence. Okay, 
you when you take care of your pentacles uh prudence is uh required prudence is you know being diligent it's um you know learning what you need to learn in order to to get something done here so i just feel like this uh this problem there's a possibility since this is swords which is your energy there's a, a possibility that you um may be a little cranky here okay there there may be some uh, imprudence or some sharp words here okay but uh somehow you're you're gonna be happy oh you know what i just heard maybe what they need is more sunlight maybe what you needed was more happiness see what i'm saying maybe that's that thinking outside the box you know because plants don't need just water they don't need just fertilizer was it getting enough sun so maybe what's going on here is that you're you may be having a hard time with your inspiration here and maybe somebody you know what i'm going to clarify that i just want to find out what's up with that what what is up with that reverse knight of swords here because it just seems like kind of a odd one out here maybe you won't be getting a message knights are they're they're bringers of change they can bring messages, 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 but they're not really messengers like the pages are. Um, you know, maybe well, let's just see. There's, there can be a lot of maybes here. Well, I am not the most elegant shuffler. Whatever. Um, what's up? My son of a. Oh, all right. So it is a message. Somebody. Uh, okay. So this may be your energy, but here we've got staves, and staves are ones. So that's fire energy. So this could be an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. This is also passion like um you may be good you may be hoping for a passion passionate message but it doesn't come in okay uh or what this could be is someone else who is not an air sign this is somebody who is um youthful maybe they have like a fiery temper and they say these rude things to you But you know, this page of, of wands or staves, he, this is a very loyal energy. This is a very friendly energy, somebody with a lot of energy. So maybe, maybe you're gonna be hard on yourself when it comes to your, um, your intuition here on what actually uh, brings you joy. Maybe what you do is you get down to you know what brings you childlike joy um, after some sort of words that they may have been sharp but maybe what they do is they kind of make things um clear for you and then that that happiness just comes right on in now the sun is also leo energy so you know, you've got this beautiful happiness coming for you. Look at how lovely this is. She is she's like receiving from the sun's energy into her crown chakra. So I, I think that something, um, obviously being happy, you have uh, gotten a, a certain amount 
maybe you got your idea. Maybe this is uh, thinking out of the box. This could be the thing that helps you to figure out exactly um, what you're trying to do here. Like, like I said, maybe what you uh, require as far as thinking out of the box is a bit more joy. The return of some sort of inspiration. Now, this is your hope card. You're hoping that you don't have to make um, a leap of faith. You're hoping that maybe you've been a little silly about this situation. Okay? This can be... Uh, carelessness, you know, so in a way, uh, when looking at it like a garden, like maybe um, it's something simple that I was taking for, gra for granted that I thought I had done, but I didn't. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe there's just something that I, I overlooked. And then here is your current state of being or environment. So what this is, is, um, you know, it's insecurity, right? I, I think you're feeling really insecure right now. Um, now, the Queen of Pentacles is a nurturer. She's got her money and everything in order. And I think that this is what you would like to be at. To um, look at her face. She looks content. She, is, um, she looks very kind and wise. Uh, but when she's in the reverse, she's insecure, a bit materialistic. She could be a social climber. So when it comes to those types of energies, look at those. Maybe that's what is wrong here. Maybe you've been too insecure about your garden growing abilities. Um, maybe what you were trying to grow is too materialistic for your spiritual path to really vibe with. Because a spiritual path doesn't vibe with materialism. That's 3D stuff. Okay. So, and what if, what if you were trying to grow your garden so that you can um, be, you know, uh, like, you know, rich or billionaire or something, and, and, you, and, and it's because you want to be up in status, not so much because of, of maybe wanting to help people. You see what I'm saying? She is a nurturer. She helps people. She's generous. She gives her money and her um, love and her time away. Maybe what you're doing is the opposite of that. And if you want to, that is what's going to be thinking outside the box, and this may even sort of be the, the sharp words. What I'm saying right now, if you don't, you know, want to look at that part, if, sometimes we don't know that these things are in an energy that are not conducive to uh, our spiritual path. I'm, you know, this, I'm slowly realizing that <laughs> My readings are all about everybody's uh, spiritual path. I'm a, I'm a twin flame reader. I'm a twin flame. This is mascul masculine and feminine power balancing out. Now, if everybody did that, that's the spiritual path. That is what I'm all about. So, you know, it's not just about money and love here. Um, during my readings, Spirit is saying, Allison, you are a reader for spiritual path information, mostly, I'm thinking. Yeah, here you are. This is your fear card. You're afraid of having to start all over. <sighs> hmm. 
Well, you know what, Aquarius? If you really did have to start all over, I don't think that this sun card would be there. I think that if it were me, I would, you know, if I figured out or realized that all I had to do was put more joy into what I'm doing or, um, you know, be less materialistic or insecure, and then that, that's it. You start doing that and then your garden starts to grow, yeah, then you don't have to start all over again, right? You know, I'm just really feeling this whole, you know, this whole garden and sun connection. I mean, even, even with this, it's like, look at, she's got this fire here. The sun is very fiery but she's upside down like there there wasn't enough sun or enough fire for this garden to to really grow and you know and if you have too much water or even too much look at how dark this soil is if you put too much water I just feel like all this would get really moldy so that could that would be like what you were afraid of you know like uh oh I've done this so wrong now and look at how he's putting this energy into this plant and the energy from the sun is being put into this person. Uh, I'm just feeling like, yeah, that's just, um, I think that it, it put more joy into what you're trying to manifest and you will have joy come back out of it, right? If you want juicy fruit, You've got to put water in it so that it has that juice. Well, now I want a piece of juicy fruit gum. Boy. All right, so, but you're going to be probably a little confused. All right, this is the potential outcome because uh, now that you've had, um, now that you're thinking outside the box, I think you've gotten probably more than one idea of how to do this. So now you're going to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm, <laughs> that guy, look at him. He's like, well, um, wow. So let's look at this picture here for a minute, though. OK. Yeah, so the one that he's touching has a little ladder. So is that a social climber? Is that the social climber energy you don't want to touch? Uh, look at this. This has water coming out of it. It's all pouring out. So it's um, that reminds me of the Five of Cups where maybe that's not going to take you anywhere good either. It's just going to um, leak out all your energy. You've, and then you've got this one right here that's obviously a snake. Looks like a water snake maybe or... This one has a bat wing over here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a, uh, a dragon in there. This one over here seems to have a skull. You know, it's these two right here that are closest to him that he's not even paying attention to that will probably be the ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you just kind of narrow it down like that, okay? You know, when you've got your choices, just kind of be like, yeah, well, you know, just look at that choice and then see what it would be like further down the line. And like this one, be honest with yourself. Do you want this option for the social climber thing? Do you want this option because you feel like it would fill up your cup, but there's this possibility that it may just leak, you know? Just check them out like that because I think that what you're going to, this is the underlying energy. You're waiting for your ships to come in. You're waiting for that perfect wave to ride. You've already manifested, right? <coughs> Pardon me. You've already planted these seeds. And you want them to grow, but you're having some delays. So you're trying to figure out what it is. And so I feel like, you know, with all this fire, these are ideas. It's your garden that you're trying to grow is actually ideas themselves. 
I mean, because look it. These are wands. These are ideas. Here's an ace of wands. Here's an ace of wands. Here's an ace of, ace of wands, right? So this is what you've planted. This is what you're waiting for to come on in. It's your garden of life. And then with all these down here, now you've got all these ideas. They're all coming on in. So then you're like, oh, wow. But then you're going to be happy. It's all going to work out. That is freaking awesome. I really like this um, Page of Swords. Most of the time, the Page of Swords is a spy or somebody stalking you on social media. <laughs> you know, this Knight of Swords can be bad self-talk which is the expression or the phrase that I was trying to remember as I was talking about it and just got to me. So please don't forget to like, especially if this has resonated with you. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And um, check out my books. Like I said, you could just, I could just be reading it in the background as you soak in a tub or can use it as a reason to go to uh, the park or spend some time by yourself. There's a, I, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can just put it on and see if you like the story. Thank you so much. Okay, so when they come out like this, I just take, oh, I just take the front one. Alrighty, so. Um, uh, whoa, number one, number one, hmm, I, I heard start at the beginning, so you were afraid that you may have to start at the beginning, but I don't know, like, because look, I forgot to mention that these, you have two sevens, okay? So look up angel number seven, seven. I don't have any more sevens, right? No. No, okay. So, um, no, I just, uh, look at this. The seven of pentacles and the seven of cups together. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know if you're going to have to start from the beginning here. I really don't because of this sun here. Now let's go ahead and um, see how this is going to pull it all together for us because I've noticed that that's pretty much what these oracles do. They pull the whole reading together. All right. Magnetism of Eros. Trust in what your heart yearns for without concern about how it will manifest. Oh, mm. take steps towards that which moves your heart. Reach out for what your soul wants and needs. Allow yourself to be vulnerable, for only then can you be truly held. That which appears out of reach or unavailable to you is closer than you realize. So I feel like that's why you have the sun. You're afraid you're going to have to start all over again. I can't, I just really don't think you're going to have to, or you wouldn't be this happy, right? And this whole thing about concern, he looks very concerned, but it also starts from the beginning. This is, you know, things aren't moving. So you're having concerns about how things will manifest. This is a card of manifestation. Okay, now, um, okay, the magnetism of Eros is our soul's fascination with that which appears different and calls to us at a deep level. This soul deep attraction inspires us to remain open, be passionate and willing to engage with life other people and new vitalizing pathways and practices that inspire us. Oh, 
This is about inspiration as well. Very much ideas, inspiration, what to do with them. It keeps us moving on our authentic life path, living by the call of the heart. This oracle indicates that your heart is being called to a particular path or way in life. It may not make logical sense, but to honor the call of the heart is to honor the needs of the soul. The call of the heart can lead you into unknown and intriguing territory. It can feel liberating, but also unsettling as you know of known worlds and reach, as you let go of known worlds and reach for the unfamiliar. <clears throat> yeah, that's what is going on here. Okay, so... Um, The call of the heart can lead you into unknown and intriguing territory. It's thinking outside the box. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. Hang on. All right, just cleared my throat. It can feel liberating but also unsettling as you let go of known worlds and reach for the unfamiliar. Or oh, I already said that. Following such a path will bring a fresh influx of energy and expand your understanding of yourself, your life path, and your higher purpose. It is meant to be. Eros is a Greek word for love. On a spiritual level, Eros is our passionate, open, engaged love for life. Wow. When we experience Eros, we are ready to embrace our journey. It is an affirmation of life. Its opposite is the destructive drive, known as the Thanatos, which is the drive behind our undermining self-defeating and self-harming behaviors. Let me just read that again. Its opposite is the destructive drive known as Thanatos, which is the drive behind our undermining, self-defeating, and self-harming behaviors. Fear of having to start again, and then I just feel like this is you talking to yourself. This whole um, sharp words. About your inspiration. Okay. We may engage, yeah, we may engage in such negative behaviors in a misguided attempt to heal ourselves or make ourselves feel better. When we act negatively, despite our best intentions to be positive, part of us is trying to tell a story that is yet to be fully heard. Until that story is heard, we cannot let it go. We get stuck in a negative loop. To resolve the negative Thanatos drive within us and in our world, we need Eros. We need to embrace life, including our negative experiences. I'm going to say that again, guys. We need to embrace life, including our negative experiences. By acknowledging and healing our suffering, we can find the courage and wisdom to live more fully. The challenge and gift of Eros leads us into our vulnerability. From there, we can also recognize our strength and dignity. We become able to let go and heal. This oracle brings the message that life has particular gifts to, turning the page, share with you. There is the promise of deep soulful connection with your true self and with others and a healing realization that you are truly desired and loved. You are encouraged to explore new pathways, especially if you feel out of your depth and a bit vulnerable in doing so, more so if they involve personal healing. This oracle indicates a path is opening up for you. 
It may not be the easiest way forward, but when your heart leaps at the prospect of it, know something truly special is unfolding for you through that pathway. Trust where your heart is leading you. Because it's leading you to happiness. Yeah, you got this, Aquarius. Um, let's see, how much control do you even have here? I can gauge that by the number of major arcana to minor. And you have the sun and the fool, and that is it. So two out of ten cards means that most of this is in your control. And um, you don't want to control this full-on happiness. Um, just let this come on in. And uh, the full, the hope of maybe not having to take a leap of faith or maybe not having to really be on your spiritual path. You might want to think about that. The fool is taking that leap of faith toward their spiritual path. Yeah. All right, that's what I have for you at this time, Aquarius. I hope you enjoyed your reading. See you next time.